Hello there. I'm Murad Mamedov. I'm a researcher at Exact Pro. Uh, I hope you can hear me and see me well. Uh, if it's okay, please, or if it's not okay, please um, text something to that uh, chat uh, near the video, near, near the stream on YouTube. <clears throat> uh, Oh, a bit about me. Uh, I work at Exact Pro as a researcher. I work in two directions. It's uh, application of machine learning in uh, software testing, and uh, it's testing of ML itself. So these are two major uh, major subjects of uh, my interest. And today, uh, today we have talk on uh, test design for AI-based systems. Uh, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, uh, Rostislav Yaworski gave uh, a lecture on testing AI, and apparently it turned into sound is okay. And apparently it turned into a series of uh, talks, uh, so a series of events, uh, which we now call uh, AI testing talks. <clears throat> uh, so uh, let me. Let me share my screen. I hope you see the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> and um, previous lecture uh, from Rostislav uh, was a high level, like uh, in general. Today we'll go a bit into details. Into details. Uh, we'll talk on. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, on current states, uh, on current state of uh, AI testing in uh, industry, we'll go through some uh, techniques, uh, methodologies, uh, even tools, uh, which are already uh, used uh, for testing of ML algorithms and models. Uh, and here's a table of content. Uh, first, we'll start with uh, kind of precondition. Uh, I, I think uh, we have uh, some people in the audience who uh, didn't work with uh, machine learning yet. So we'll go through uh, general explanation uh, of a neural network, uh, like how it looks, how it works, so what it does. Mm -hmm. Then we'll move to machine learning development process uh, overview. Mm -hmm. We will specify what exactly we are discussing here, like which part of this uh, uh, process map. Mm -hmm. Then we'll uh, check out what's going on in the industry on a higher level, on the level of uh, businesses and governments. Uh, talk a bit about uh, wh why is test design uh, important in this particular case. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we'll go through the, we'll dive more into <clears throat> technical details. Uh, we'll go through um, testing techniques uh, from uh, three strategies uh, perspectives, like black, white, and data box uh, testing. And uh, in the conclusion, we'll uh, discuss, uh, I hope you will help me <laughs> with your questions. Uh, um, uh, we'll discuss the challenges, uh, what is good, what is bad, what can uh, we do better in, uh, <clears throat> in the area of uh, AI testing. Uh, and about the questions. Uh, if you have uh, questions in general, uh, they will be answered uh, in the end uh, after the presentation. Um, and if you have some particular question about a specific term or <clears throat> something like uh, something I talk about, like and uh, you don't understand, please do not hesitate uh, to ask the, your questions as well. Uh, I'll try to monitor the chat from time to time and uh, address uh, address the questions mm, quickly. Uh, so 
about a neural net. Mm. Uh, usually there is a picture of some circles and arrows. Uh, uh, and that's true. Uh, so here you see at the screen um, a schema, uh, like a general, uh, general representation of a neural net. Uh, it has uh, input layer, which takes the data. It has output layer, which <laughs> gives us back some new data. Uh, <clears throat> and in between, we have uh, layers. Uh, first uh, neural net uh, called uh, perceptron uh, had just one uh, internal layer. Uh, it was created like maybe 60 or 70 years ago. Uh, and its purpose was to um, to recognize uh, <clears throat> digits, like uh, pictures with some uh, numbers. Uh, from that time, uh, the complexity of neural nets uh, increased significantly. So now it's uh, like thousands, oh no, actually b billions of, <laughs> billions of uh, uh, neurons uh, uh, distributed across thousands of uh, layers and they have some tricky connections. Uh, <clears throat> uh, if, you, uh, if you Google uh, a general uh, schema of some uh, complex neural net, like uh, let's say Google's TensorFlow, uh, you will see something which reminds us uh, about <laughs> a spaceship. <clears throat> uh, so uh, first you have uh, an empty algorithm uh, like uh, uh, they might, might might not know even be some structure like uh, like those arrows and uh, neurons, and you start uh, feeding uh, some data. Uh, it's called training data. Uh, <clears throat> during this process, uh, during this process, uh, algorithm turns into a model, into a trained uh, model, trained neural net. <clears throat> it uh, builds uh, the connections and neurons sometimes, not, not, uh, not in every uh, neural net, but uh, in some specific cases as well. And the main thing that uh, which uh, any uh, neural net or even simple model does, uh, it's <clears throat> adjusting the functions. Like each green circle is actually a function uh, like uh, it literally can be represented as a, a math formula or as a piece of uh, software code. Uh, <clears throat> and it has uh, some um, weights, it's called weights. Uh, weights uh, tells, uh, tells the new uh, the net uh, how to react in the future for the future data. Uh, <clears throat> Mm. future data uh, so when the uh, training process is done uh, you can uh, feed um, testing data or enterprise data and check uh, some predictions check out some predictions uh, like let's say to recognize uh, if if this fault like in your test library uh, happened due to a mistake in uh, in a system under test, or was it due to a mistake in your testing library itself? Uh, like this is the basic sounds sounds like basic uh, classification problem. Uh, like you need to classify, and uh, such a neural net. Uh, which is trained with respective data from your uh, um, test execution uh, historical data uh, will give you some predictions maybe good maybe bad uh, about uh, what kind of fault is this like uh, <clears throat> and we have first question by Yulia Emilianova which types of neural networks are widely used in AI? Could you please provide some examples of neural network types used for the specific types of AI systems? Uh, yes, 
uh, quite good question. Actually, <laughs> we, we can have a separate uh, lecture on uh, on this specific question. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, well, uh, in general, uh, well, there, 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 there are loads of different uh, types of neural nets, uh, architectures, sub-architectures, and so on. Uh, the most famous, the, the, the most widely used uh, ones are uh, architectures called um, convolutional neural nets, networks and uh, recurrent neural networks. Uh, uh, convolutional are usually used, C CNN for short, uh, CNNs are usually used for uh, image recognition tasks. Uh, like if you go to any article from, from big tech, or if you check out some uh, small businesses that use uh, libraries from big tech, <laughs> including TensorFlow. Um, mm, about on the floor. Well, okay. Uh, <clears throat> for image uh, recognition tasks, it's usually a co convolutional neural network. Uh, it was created like in 90s, as I remember. And uh, the idea uh, was taken from, uh, from our eyes, like uh, mammals, human beings' eyes, uh, uh, how it works. Like we have a full picture uh, as an input, and then our brain uh, disassembles it into uh, into pieces uh, like parts uh, and processes it. Uh, so at each uh, next layer, uh, let's say if if, if it's uh, an a CNN, um, then each new level we will get a smaller piece of of this image. This is first thing. Second thing thing it will take. Not like uh, after that input layer, it takes not the image itself, it takes uh, matrices of numbers. So literally uh, tables of uh, with, some, with some digits, uh, with some um, values. Uh, RNN, uh, RNNs are usually, um, well, they also can uh, work with uh, image recognition, uh, but uh, on top of RNN, uh, they are created uh, a specific, uh, a specific uh, architecture called LSTM. LSTM is long, short-term memory. Uh, it works well with uh, some data sequences, uh, like uh, let's say timelines, or maybe uh, uh, texts uh, when you need to predict. Uh, when, when, when it takes a beginning of a text of a string and it uh, and it should predict uh, the, the 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 remaining part of of this uh, so uh, these two and i would say uh, decision uh, trees decision trees uh, decision trees are not uh, neural networks uh, but they are widely used uh, for neural nets improvements. Like, for example, you can you can uh, cut off this output layer and uh, mount there a decision tree, like boosting algorithm. It's it's a specific variation of decision tree, and uh, <clears throat> and it will. Uh, might might if if you if you train it properly, it might improve the predictions of uh, initial neural neural network. Uh, for instance, DeepMind uh, used uh, used decision trees for search, uh, like in order to predict the best move. Like the neural net itself, network itself knows uh, some tricks, like how to play chess. Uh, the rules, uh, the moves, what what can be done, uh, like some historic data, historical data. Uh, but uh, this decision tree uh, <clears throat> searches a best move for this particular situation, for the current state of uh, of the game. Uh, well, <laughs> I got a bit to the side from our topic. Uh, 
so to, to, to conclude this, uh, at, this, at this point, uh, deep neural networks uh, have input, output layer, and uh, inner layers. Inner layers uh, got some uh, weights during training, and then uh, due to this uh, due to this weights and connections between layers and neurons, they can give you some predictions. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. uh, next step about ML process development uh, ML development process map. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, like uh, a bunch of st st stages. Uh, uh, if you have, well, why is it important? Uh, from like, uh, we can consider it from two perspective, uh, perspectives. First, um, first, um, the thing is that AI based system uh, is a set of components. Uh, some of them are uh, AI, like uh, models, algorithms. Some of them are classic components, usual uh, usual software uh, software code. Uh, so uh, for today, we are talking about on, only about uh, AI components, about models. Uh, this is the first thing. Second thing, uh, when you are like, uh, as, 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 as I gave you an example before, uh, we need to train uh, an algorithm. Uh, this is quite uh, significant, um, like complex, complex process to, to, to train, to, to choose a model properly to train it. Uh, uh, before that, you need to juggle with data, like to clean it, uh, to actually turn data into information to some degree, uh, because actually uh, the models, the algorithms are uh, quite dumb. So um, they do not understand the raw data itself. Uh, you need to like bring it into some order to some degree. So the that cleaning uh, part, uh, the data engineering part, uh, data cleaning part takes uh, about like sixty percent of uh, of time. Maybe in some cases it it might be even eighty percent. Uh, before that, you also need to collect the data. Uh, so you are collecting the data, you are cleaning it, you are uh, training model, uh, you are assessing it. Uh, then you <clears throat> need to integrate your ML component into with with, with, with other uh, components. Uh, you also need to deploy it into production. Uh, after you uh, done with all of this, you still need to monitor uh, if if your uh, AI is still actual if it still meets the real world state like for example if you are uh, if if your car was like a self driving car uh, um, algorithm was trained on like summer data and then someone uh, drive to to a place where it's snow or like uh, some some new conditions um, <clears throat> your model, your algorithm might stop working properly, uh, and you need to check this, like, to keep an eye on this. Uh, so, since uh, the pro the process is complex uh, and uh, consists of quite different uh, uh, topics. Should differ significantly. Uh, we'll take today only these two data, uh, which which are related to data collection and preparation and mo model training, evaluation, and uh, tuning. <clears throat> uh, so, at this point, no questions for now. Uh, what goes on in the industry? Uh, good news. At, uh, during the last uh, two years, uh, the AI, well, uh, uh, businesses and governments were uh, interested in this area initially, uh, but uh, for the last two years, we got uh, some new kind of activities. Uh, it's, I, I, I call it monitoring and control. 
Uh, <clears throat> here are a few examples, links. Uh, for example, in US, in the US, we have uh, a new alliance, Data and Trust. Uh, they, they call themselves, it's, 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 it's official meaning. Uh, <clears throat> uh, they have around 70 members, as I remember. Uh, uh, the organizations, the companies, businesses uh, joined this uh, joined this alliance, uh, launched this alliance in order to tackle uh, the to tackle the uh, difficulties uh, difficulties uh, they are meeting during uh, AI development, uh, including including the uh, quality issues as well. Uh, second example is. Uh, European Union AI regulation draft. It have been draft has been draft in the in the draft state for several months since last year, and as I remember, it still is. Uh, the purpose of this uh, document it it might be a uh, law in the future. Uh, the purpose is to regulate uh, AI development and uh, usage processes. Uh, it also uh, pays attention to the quality. And the last example is uh, uh, ISO guidelines on testing of AI-based systems. Um, this is official name. Uh, <clears throat> and in this example oh, uh, this is actually an addition to their existing guidelines for software, software development like they added some sections related to uh, AI systems uh, it's just the beginning uh, these uh, things are uh, these things are quite immature yet uh, but uh, Still, there's a good news uh, that we have some uh, quality assurance, uh, quality assurance uh, activities uh, for AI. Uh, it's good because uh, usually, usually, if there is uh, attention to quality assurance, uh, there is also attention uh, to testing as well. And as, uh, as software testers, we are uh, happy to see that. <clears throat> uh, well, now the bad news. The bad news is that um, how uh, the quality of AI uh, is considered at uh, that higher level, at uh, the level of businesses and governments. Um, here is like a list of items, uh, what can go wrong. Uh, this list is prepared by DeepMind for um, language models, but actually it can be it can be applied to any kind of uh, algorithms and uh, areas of AI. Uh, and the thing is that uh, why I like this this list because they uh, call it uh, risks. If you if you go to the news uh, or to social media and look look up some uh, something about this, <clears throat> like let's say human computer interaction harm, <clears throat> you will mostly see that uh, specialists uh, sp specialists uh, consider it as uh, requirements like uh, we we need to pay attention to the requirements about equality for example uh, well uh, equality itself uh, it doesn't sound as a complete requirement it it sounds like a concern which uh, yeah it really takes place uh, it uh, should be addressed uh, but uh, this uh, this sentence, this this kind of statements, uh, they are not bringing us closer to uh, to how to tackle it. And the practice shows that uh, the experience shows that uh, usually 
usually, uh, usually uh, such uh, cr crazy uh, situations when an AI system has a flaw are uh, being found by uh, by users, not at the, at the development stage, not even during the monitoring. Uh, it's found by it's being found by the users themselves uh, by accident. Uh, an interesting an interesting example was from Twitter. Uh, like uh, um, there is a feature you can you can uh, link uh, attach a photo to your tweet, and uh, it turned out uh, that uh, it recognizes faces, uh, but <laughs> it prefers white faces. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if, you, if you have a picture uh, with uh, two, two faces of different uh, races, uh, then uh, it will always always focus on the white one. Uh, <clears throat> European one. So uh, uh, this was found uh, by usual users. Uh, and actually, after they uh, found it, out, uh, they conducted like users, still users, conducted uh, a series of tests. Like they are not software testers; they are just uh, usual people who, who prepared a good set of tests and uh, like like um, <clears throat> completed about uh, about uh, this issue to Twitter and to some. Social media. Like, uh, <clears throat> it was a kind of scandal, the case. So, uh, again, uh, if you talk on that higher level, uh, these are not requirements, these are just risks. So, uh, the objective when if, if we need to uh, test something, we need uh, here another term Oracle. Uh, Oracle is usually considered as a uh, something, something that uh, makes you understand what is expected result for your test case. So, uh, in most cases, an oracle can be considered as a requirement, direct or indirect. <clears throat> Speech takes too long. Well, uh, I need to <clears throat> speed up a bit. Uh, so about the oracles, uh, as we can see from, from here, uh, there is no understanding of, uh, of the requirements for now. So we need to pay more attention to oracles uh, because they uh, help us on one, on one hand, they help us to uh, set up the test generation properly, like to create proper test generation techniques uh, on one hand. On the other hand, uh, they uh, allow us uh, to focus better on, uh, on requirements, on uh, use cases, on scenarios. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and uh, now we're, uh, slightly moving to how can it be done. So uh, we have three uh, strategies, a black box, a white box, and a data box. Uh, uh, here we'll have some uh, testing techniques. Uh, let's start with black box. Uh, first, if you, if you Google about black box uh, testing for machine learning, you will see mostly uh, articles and researchers and works about mutational approach. It's also called uh, fuzzing. Uh, <clears throat> this approach assumes that you are uh, changing something. Uh, you can uh, change uh, algorithm itself, like it's, uh, it's source code. Uh, you can uh, make some changes into uh, train data and test data. Uh, so, first two, algorithms and uh, training data, uh, it's quite exp expensive because after each change, even the smallest one, uh, you need to uh, redo all the work. Like, if you have one small change in training data, you need to retrain your algorithm. If you have uh, one small change in algorithm, you need to retrain algorithm again. 
uh, and so on. This is quite expensive uh, from resources perspective, like computational money, time, and so on. So the most uh, widely spread uh, application is uh, mutational uh, mutation of uh, test data. Uh, when you already have a trained algorithm and you need to test it, uh, like maybe to do some uh, cross validation, you test data. Uh, <clears throat> you make some changes in test data. Uh, literally, you are like changing the the input, uh, uh, like the values, strings, uh, numbers. Uh, images, uh, sounds, and so on, whatever data you have. Uh, and then uh, you compare, uh, you compare uh, how the behavior of, um, of a neural net, of an algorithm changes. Like with this change, it gives us, with, with this change in input, it gives us uh, one prediction. With, with, uh, with another uh, change in input data, it gives us uh, another prediction. And uh, and you can actually find defects with this approach. The thing is that uh, how these mutations are done. Usually uh, they are algorithmic. Uh, they are algorithmic, but they rely strongly on stochastic uh, stochastic uh, approach. Like basically, you are ch changing the data uh, mostly using math, like math statistics, uh, probability theory. Uh, but in 99% of uh, cases, you do not uh, address uh, business requirements. Uh, that makes you like uh, generate loads of test cases, uh, but you are not sure if you found uh, enough bugs enough defects. Uh, if you found proper defects, like uh, let's say if you have uh, lower and uh, lower and major, uh, minor and major uh, priority defects, we would like to find uh, uh, major first. They are much more crucial. So <clears throat> we have no uh, proof that we found uh, uh, the most interesting bugs. This is the lack of, of mutational approach. Uh, next stage in black box goes uh, combinatorial approach. Uh, here is an, uh, an example. Um, like you take features, uh, you are like the features are still some parameters of the data. Uh, in this example, it's uh, thickness and uh, curvature of uh, the handwriting of, of the digital. How, how the digits are uh, drawn. And uh, you take it as a kind of kind of requirement where you uh, build a, and, and you build a decision map, let's say, decision map. And you iterate through these two parameters. Like if we uh, adjust parameter A to one state and if we adjust parameter B to another state. Uh, and you look how the behavior of your uh, model changes um, through this, uh, through these <clears throat> adjustments. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and the next level, next level is a business logic approach. Uh, with this, with this approach, you are already quite close to, uh, as it says, <laughs> to the business requirements. Like um, I like this uh, this research. Uh, here is the link. Uh, <clears throat> the guys uh, did. Uh, quite a uh, great job on that uh, initial stage when they are 
uh, researching the data, the training data. Uh, they, uh, they are using some uh, external materials. Uh, they, are, uh, they had consensus meetings with, uh, with, um, with the subject matter experts. Uh, there were two case studies. Uh, one was with uh, digits and uh, with digi uh, <clears throat> digit recognition. And another one was with um, autonomous vehicles. Um, it was uh, steering angle, uh, steering angle um, predictions for, for the cars. Uh, so uh, after these uh, activities, like uh, data research, materials research, uh, meetings with SMEs, uh, they uh, prepared a set of uh, they called features. Uh, well, technically, those features are <clears throat> high-level business requirements, and uh, uh, and in this case study, uh, one more uh, one more important thing: uh, the guys brought closer all these three uh, levels of bl black box testing. Like first, uh, they uh, had these uh, business activities, then they moved to combinatorial uh, approach, and then uh, they uh, expanded their testing library using uh, mutational uh, test generation techniques. So uh, basically these are uh, high level requirements. These are use cases. And these are exact uh, test cases. And uh, and this is the only the, the, the only work I found uh, which tries to bring uh, the those three stages closer to each other. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I see this as uh, as a right direction. So. Uh, I hope we'll have more examples like like this in the future, because mostly for now, mostly uh, the developers, uh, the teams, uh, use like they they just take one of these uh, two and use only uh, without any uh, without any uh, connection to other techniques. Uh, so next. Next stage is a uh, white box strategy. Uh, white box strategy. Uh, the most interesting here, uh, the strongest part of uh, white box uh, strategy is called activation testing. Uh, let's, uh, let's go back to that um, schema of a neural net. So uh, as I uh, mentioned before, uh, each uh, each neuron can be uh, represented as a math formula or software function. Uh, and it has some uh, weights. Uh, so due to like uh, these weights, uh, each neuron can be activated or not. Uh, it means first, uh, what, what is activation? It means that uh, if, if this particular neuron will give some output, because we, we, we have a general output of the whole um, net, uh, but we also have uh, outputs on in each layer uh, from, uh, from some of the uh, neurons. So uh, activation means that a neuron gave us back some, uh, some value. This is first thing. And second thing, how exactly it was activated, what, like or what was this value? Uh, why is it important? Um, like, uh, because, because each neuron's uh, activation and or non-activation and its uh, activation value uh, impacts uh, the latter part of uh, neural nets. Uh, the next layers and next neurons. Uh, <clears throat> so we would like to we would like to uh, check their behavior, and uh, there are uh, several approaches. 
uh, what exactly uh, to check, how, how, how exactly to check these activations. First goes uh, just usual activation. It's uh, done by threshold. Like, like let's say your uh, neuron might give us back might give back some value from minus one to plus one. Uh, so uh, you can you can say I'm interested in all the uh, values in all the neurons that uh, give us uh, something that is not zero. That is not zero. Uh, this is usual neuron coverage uh, <clears throat> um, technique. Next goes neuron boundaries uh, coverage. Uh, it might be something like from like like a range like from 0 0.3 to 0 0.35 uh, <clears throat> like when you are interested in some particular predictions uh, uh, next was uh, next goes uh, differential testing it's it's quite expensive uh, approach it's quite expensive approach because it uh, Uh, it's supposed to be uh, tested on top of a uh, few uh, models in parallel. Like you are taking a uh, few algorithms, maybe the same architecture or different. You are training with uh, some data, maybe the same data or different. And then you are testing with the, their activations, their neuron activations, uh, using the same uh, tests using the same input data and you then track uh, down the differences in their behavior let's say uh, an algorithm trained with this data behaves like like this an algorithm uh, trained with uh, another data behaves uh, in a different way and so on uh, next those ssc uh, vsc and so on um, next part they are about uh, they are about uh, uh, about interactions between uh, neurons and uh, layers. Like if if this particular neuron uh, impacted next layer, and how exactly it it, it impacted it. If if yes. <clears throat> and the last one is. Uh, uh, likelihood, uh, likelihood, and uh, distance-based uh, surprise at the question. Uh, <laughs> I like I like this uh, technique for for its naming, and um, it 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 literally is um, a surprise because uh, you are checking uh, like you you take uh, a trained algorithm, you give some input. And uh, you, you actually give, give two, two inputs. One is the data uh, from training, the data this uh, neural net was trained uh, with. And another input is uh, something new, some, some new data, testing data. And uh, you check the difference on uh, how, what, what is the difference in neuron activation uh, between those two inputs like how this neural net reacts to uh, familiar data and how this um, neural net reacts to unfamiliar data. Uh, and then you can uh, compare the difference. So this difference is called surprise. Uh, uh, here is a list of uh, tools uh, uh, for activation testing. Uh, you can check them later. Uh, here are some extra details. I think we are not going to discuss it today. Uh, but uh, if you're interested, you can Google it later or uh, check the differences between between these tools. Uh, I would say that that Deep Consolidic is the most mature one, uh, mature one from 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 these uh, seven tools. So what, what is missing? What is missing uh, in activation testing? 
the thing is that uh, most of the researchers, uh, when they do that activation testing, they focus on uh, the only on the what what's going on in inside the neural net, and pay less attention to uh, and pays uh, less attention to uh, the output. Like they are still checking it, uh, like it was in that example with uh, LSA and DSA, uh, but still, mm, it's not a verification of validation from uh, our business requirements perspective. Uh, for this, for this, um, as a recipe, recipe uh, for improvements, uh, we might bring uh, closer uh, input testing like black box and activation testing. Like we, when we are uh, creating test library for activation testing, uh, we consider uh, what we know from our input testing phase and uh, vice versa. Mm. And the last one is data box strategy. Uh, data box strategy is, uh, uh, it's new, it's not new one, but uh, for some reasons it has less researches and less tools, techniques and on uh, in comparison with previous two with uh, white and uh, black box uh, testing. Uh, if you go Google some data box uh, ML testing uh, materials, uh, you will in most in most cases you will come across across the uh, tra training data uh, mutational approach, uh, which is actually not uh, data testing, which is actually not data testing. Uh, as data testing, we can consider uh, classic EDA uh, and CDA, uh, like uh, exploratory data analysis and uh, confirmatory data analysis. Uh, this is really uh, data testing. Uh, the thing is that, um, EDA uh, takes into account only like it operates on stochastic level again. Like we are checking some, uh, you know, uh, outliers, uh, distributions, uh, and so on uh, from math perspective. Uh, but we pay less attention to uh, to the business logic of the data. Uh, uh, like if it represents, uh, if it represents uh, the real world properly, and uh, as an idea for this part, as an idea for improvements, uh, it's uh, it has no name for now. Like uh, oh, I, I claimed it a combinatorial idea. Um, the idea is to. To explore the data from use cases perspective, like something like uh, high-level uh, user scenarios. Uh, basically, you are taking your data and you are merging the data points into some uh, kind of groups, uh, and then uh, you can see uh, what's going on. Uh, it it might involve uh, statistical uh, tools as well, like uh, uni uh, varied or multivariate uh, analysis, uh, but still it should be done from, uh, from business logic perspective, from business requirements perspective. Uh, and in some cases here, it might be, um, might be easier uh, because uh, because you might some some companies already have requirements for data acquisition, like if they are acquiring data his, historical data from production or uh, generating synthetic data. So this uh, data testing will work for both sides uh, in both directions. Uh, on one hand, you can test uh, if if you acquired the data properly. On the other hand, you can uh, prepare your future testing like black and white box testing uh, better because you better know uh, 
you know better what what what's inside uh, from a business perspective. Uh, we have one more question. Uh, you have told only about why when black box testing strategies for AI systems, maybe gray box test strategy should also be added in this classification. Uh, well, it's 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 about naming. Uh, you might have well. In fact, in fact, uh, uh, this if you, if you, if you take uh, like this uh, the term uh, gray box testing. Uh, it says that it's a mixture of uh, wh white and black. Uh, black when we focus only on uh, input output, uh, white when we uh, consider only uh, the inner guts uh, of uh, of some. Uh, So uh, I'm kind of back. <laughs> Sorry for for that. Uh, for some reason, Zoom uh, stopped working. Uh, so um, technically, uh, you already have uh, access to uh, like uh, to neural nets uh, inner parts, like it's. Uh, neurons and layers and uh, functions and weights and so on. On the other hand, you also at, this, at the same time, you have access to input, uh, oh, sorry, to the output, to the final output, to the prediction. Uh, so uh, it depends only on how you use that. Like if you, if you use uh, both of them, then uh, from terminology perspective, yes, it, it, is, it is a gray box. Gray box. Um, just mostly it's called white box for some reasons. Well, and, and yes, uh, conclusion is quite short. Uh, since this is still a new area, uh, AI testing, no one knows how to test it properly. Uh, the main recommendation, the main uh, idea, which we need to explore is not just to focus only on specific techniques, but to think also on uh, how we can bring closer uh, those different techniques uh, to each other, and also how to bring uh, those technical uh, aspects uh, closer to, uh, to the business level, like how to connect them. Um, so uh, that's it from my side. I I finished. Um, thank you for attending. Now, now if you have uh, questions, uh, you can you can ask. I think we have at least six uh, more minutes for Q and A session, uh, and you can ask questions about the uh, presentation itself or any other questions related to AI machine learning area, I'm happy to answer. Okay, let, let's wait, wait for one more minute. And if there are no questions, we'll leave this meeting.
well no questions uh thank you guys uh join us during our next sessions uh we'll update you on our social media uh on this matter and uh, thank you one more time uh for uh questions and for your attendance uh bye